Welcome to the Gen Z Stoic Podcast. I'm your host, Ren. I'm your host, Mateo. And today we're going to be talking about the power of respect and how Stoics become influential. Um, we'd like to encourage new listeners before we begin our episode to listen to previous episodes, especially our first one. Everything we talk about on the show obviously relates to Stoicism, and our first episode encapsulates all of the values that Stoicism preaches. And so when we're talking about those values, we don't really re-go over them, so it would be beneficial for you as viewers to go back and watch those. But enough of that, let's get into the actual meat of today's episode. So when we talk about respect and influence, um, today we're going to go over why, first and foremost, you have to prioritize self-respect and internal respect over external respect. It starts there. Right, and with external respect, that we're going to lead that into uh, influence and how, when other people respect you, how what influence means to a stoic. So when seeking value, honor, and all these things we've preached, you'll still be able to stand out influence the right group of people your target audience and you will be able to respect um other people and other people will find to easy to be able to respect you we're also going to be covering how to gain respect from anyone not that again stoics cared about getting the respect from anybody but the respect from people that they care about and respect themselves um and then lastly how respect works best when perceived as a value exchange so rather than seeing um how can I get this person to follow me? It's how can me and this person work together mutually and gain value from one another? And I think it's important that um, Stoics did teach that you only respect people who are worthy of it and share the same values. But in today's society where people are very power hungry, I think it's also useful to give tips on how, um, you know, the saying is there's, if you have, it's not who you know, it's, you know, where they are having friends in high places. And so how to when those people in authority who you need to build relationships with to further your personal goals, how you go about doing that. And we're going to start with <clears throat> self-respect and um, seeking personal values. To a Stoic, obviously the teaching is that you don't care about things that are outside of your control. And certainly whether people respect you or not falls under that umbrella. You can be the greatest person of all time. You can be living your values. And ultimately there are still going to be people who hate what you're doing and don't respect you and will be quick to diss or backstab you, and that's outside of your control. But what is under your control is self-respect. How do we define self-respect? To me, self-respect falls under four categories. You don't compromise your inner vision. You have a vision of where you want to see yourself go. You have a set of goals, and you never compromise those goals because they are what you have set for yourself, and that's your ultimate life purpose. So why would you ever compromise those? Similar to Cato the Younger's preachings, yep. Um, Not ignoring your inner voice. Um, You talk a lot about trust your gut. That's certainly a stoic teaching. Um, If you're living those values, you ultimately have a heightened knowledge over others on a lot of areas. And so you never ignore your inner voice. When you're in a scenario with other people and they may be doing things that your inner voice is telling you not to do, self-respectful people would go along with what you think because you respect your view and are not willing to change that on the guise of others. Thirdly is not obeying the commands of others if it contradicts what you believe in. Obviously this ties together with the last one, but doing things that only are what you believe in and getting others to join on that train. And then fourth and finally is not admiring the opinion of others over your own opinion. And it's ironic that that's one of the values of self-respect when we're talking about the power of respect. But ultimately, if you're seeking the respect of others, but you don't respect yourself, at the end of the day, how happy are you going to be? Um, All the people in the world can tell you that you're great, but if you get home, it's just you by yourself telling you that maybe that's not true. It doesn't matter. Other people don't live with you 24-7, but you have to live with yourself (laughs) 24-7. Um, and because of that, um, self-respect is not admiring the opinion of others. It's judging right. yourself based on your own opinion. Right, and that's what Marcus says. You know, he has a quote where it says, um, man puts himself before all but puts the opinions of others before his own, right? And that's just like like you said, if you, like anybody, would put themselves before anybody else, but we would put others' opinions before our own, it just doesn't make sense. You have to learn to respect yourself enough to put your opinions and not compromise those. Uh, and so, again, that kind of leads into this next point where there's, a major difference between doing things in order to gain respect or admiration of others or being respected of how you live and act. So instead of doing things for a result, you're doing things because it's the right thing to do. We always say that if you're honest with yourself and with your actions, honest people are going to follow and going to mm-hmm. notice that. it's You can't go out looking for something. You have to act righteously and then the righteous uh, virtues and results are going to come your way. And then respect also... It doesn't start with other people it starts internally and if you truly it's the same thing with motivation right you don't get motivation you may get it from an outside source but ultimately it's the purpose Mm -hmm. within yourself that's going to guide you so like with respect 
uh, once you live up to your values and live respectfully, then external respect is going to start to follow that. I think I think the key takeaway here is that yes, you don't want to seek respect from others. Um, you don't want that to be your utmost goal. But unfortunately, in today's society, you have to. You have to yeah. obviously, and that's not just today's society. That's all society. You have to work with people to achieve your goals. There are going to be people who come al- along in your life who further your goals and give you opportunities that. Um, allow you to achieve what your goals and what your purpose is and you may not respect them and their values but you have to learn how to work with them and so what we're stressing the key takeaway is that start with self-respect because it seems as though when you respect yourself and you live to those values the influence and respect just naturally follow if you look at historical stoics they were influential in their time but they didn't seek that it just naturally Mm -hmm. occurred to them because they were teaching these things and living these things and so similarly live to how the stoics did and you will see that you find that influence simply because you stand out and are that honest person who respects yeah. himself before admiring the opinion of others. And I, I certainly think that, you know, self-respect is a huge foundation for just morals in general. Um, you say you have to start with self-respect in order to go with honesty. I mean, if you don't respect yourself, then you're not going to be honest with yourself. If mm-hmm. you don't respect yourself, you're not going to be a man of your word. Right. So. And... Um, that's basically the key takeaway is that start with self-respect and we certainly incorporated that in all episodes but again it's just you know living those stoic values holding yourself accountable right. and then uh, externally applying it it starts in it's an inward out process it's not a outward feedback that you take in and then you work off of and so we mentioned that um, when you respect yourself influence will naturally follow so let's now kind of define what influence is I think influence is different nowadays than it was back when Stoics were teaching. Well, but yeah, I think yeah. the problem is is that too many people mistake influence for just simply for money and materialistic things. Mm-hmm. We've covered how a Stoic does not simply just strive for those materialistic things. Certainly, you want to have good things, but that's not your purpose. If good things come along while you know, you're living your values, then you accept that and you're happy with mm-hmm. that. It's not a punishment to you or a detriment that you have nice things you have a nice car you have a lot of money it's whether or not you're doing that with the self-respect and with the values so influence i think can be as simple as just having the ability to influence people with your words and with your actions it's when you say things they have meaning people take it to heart and they act upon it it's you know getting inside knowledge of events that impact you Um, when you're influential people trust you a lot more and so they're going to share things with you that they may not share with others right and you certainly can take advantage of that but take advantage of it for good is what i would say but you take advantage of that because you go throughout the day knowing more than the average person and that's obviously very valuable we talk about as stoics how we don't care about things outside of our control but we care about things within our control and when you have influence you get a lot more things under your control and so there's a lot more things that you can change and a lot more things that you can care about and in addition to that When you're living throughout your life, if you slip up, but you have influence, you generally get the benefit of the doubt. If people know you as a kind, honest person, and you make a mistake, they're more likely to judge you and say, oh, that was a one-off thing, or that was just a simple mistake, versus if you're known as somebody who um, isn't nice, isn't honest, doesn't really do the things we talk about, isn't compassionate, people are going to judge you as that's your personality, and so they're not going to benefit, give you the benefit of the doubt. So influence is both impactful on a day-to-day scale and just overall well that that gives you control over the aspects in your life that you can control like you said when you have influence and that that gives you more control of the things that you can control and even how other people perceive you if you put yourself out as a very good honest true man of virtue then that's going to come back to you as good karma now and when talking about gaining control over aspects of your life uh it allows you to also just further develop your personal goals and your mindset. I think, unfortunately, nowadays, what we call influencers are doing things more for the camera rather than truly documenting their life, which is why social media can be very misleading. Um, not to go off on a tangent, but I think influence now is very misconstrued and very, it's, it's an illusion now. I also think it's too fluid. I think that influence can cover a broad scope of things that maybe it shouldn't. Like we said, influence really should not cover money and materialistic things. Right. Um, the people who truly have influence in this world, yes, it seems like they coexist with the grand lifestyle, but ultimately they got there because they lived their lives according to how Stoics did, according to right. good values and good morals. Well, and, that, and that's the thing is, you like you said, instead of materialistic items, you could be 
dirt broke. Like you mm-hmm. could be at the bottom of a financial situation and have no accessories, no nothing. But if your words are powerful and your statements just hit people internally, that's going to influence people. That's how people grow in popularity. It doesn't matter how much money you have. If your words are resonating with people truly, then that's what's going to give you influence. And you're when by expressing your opinion that people agree with, that's how you're going to make a real change in a society. People with strong voices who aren't afraid to use them, that's also a giant part of it, is everybody has a voice, but I think the people with the strongest amount of influence are those who really truly aren't afraid to just speak their truth. That's what we're trying to do here in our in our podcast. And that's what Stoic strived for. It, it was influence that, they didn't strive for influence as something that's out of your control, but like we reiterating again, living true to your values and morals, influence will come because unfortunately, and it's the harsh truth, but a lot of people just are not living, I would say disciplined lives. And when you see someone living with discipline, living consistently, that that's inspiring to me personally right. anyway. And so people are going to follow you and try and be like that because ultimately everybody wants to be happy. Mm-hmm. And we know that happiness stems from discipline and consistency and good habits. Right. And those kind of influencers that you mentioned, it's interesting you bring that up and I don't really think it's a tangent, but you see that there's, a, there's also a trend now that's called de-influencers. And it's people who kind of fulfill the same role as influencers, but they call out influencer culture and they call out kind of consumption culture. And it's very interesting to see that. We talked about right from the jump that we see that there's a lot of problems in society that are a, a direct cause of, a direct consequence of the digital age. However, there's a large majority, especially in Generation Z, who sees that and recognizes that, and we wanted to be part of that. Right. And that's what influence is. If you use influence for good, it is something that maybe you should seek after you learn to respect yourself and live your values right. because it's something that you can use to positively change others' lives. Sure. That's the whole intent of this podcast, and right. that's why we want to talk about influence today so that you can also go out into your lives, go out into your community, and if it's not stoicism, just teach good morals, teach right. good values, and kind of stand out in terms of how you act with discipline and respect. Right. And we're and we're we're true with our intentions. That's the th- that's the thing as well as with in today's society, with influence comes power and money. But I think people with pure intentions who truly have the intention to help other people fix their lives, like we are trying mm-hmm. to do, I feel like in the long run that will always lead to a happier life. Right. It's it's starting internally first starting with your message first and then it just seems that you are rewarded because you are living a good life and you are living with values that stand out from um, other people that it's just a natural byproduct that you get the things that make you happy right and so that's what we're just advising today and that's what we're going to give tips on later in the episode but before we do that we're going to throw in a little fun section today fun section yeah so again we've mentioned in all of our fun sections but we are doing a guest spot speaker giveaway uh, how to enter yourself into this random selection is to subscribe to our YouTube, comment on our recent video, follow our Instagram and TikTok, uh, and then and soon in the upcoming episodes, we're going to select the guest speaker to sit in. And it's not just um, for you guys. Obviously, the giveaway is something audience-oriented, but we really just truly appreciate all criticism and feedback. Like We're starting out in a basement um, kind of with no podcasting knowledge, very basic setup. And so any feedback we get, whether it's positive or negative, is greatly appreciated because right. we're new to this and we need to know like what we can do to improve. And we have no better tool to do that than our audience, than you guys who are able to listen kind of with an objective, unbiased lens and then tell us, you know, hey, you missed this or you right. did great on this. And so um, that's kind of our motivations for why we we're doing the giveaway and we greatly appreciate it yeah. um, if you guys gave us some of that feedback. But yeah. moving on to our actual fun section, today we're going to do... Um, kind of beating a dead horse since we criticize social media we do. every yeah. episode. But today is going to be our least favorite social media app and why. I'll let you go first. Well, I think for me it's pretty self-explanatory. So I haven't had Snapchat for... If we didn't count the two weeks in December, it would be since last June. So coming up on about eight months now. Um, I did relapse in December and I will admit that. I mean, I'm not perfect, but I was able to then find the purpose but the reason that i dislike snapchat so much i have three main reasons one i just don't see value Mm -hmm. in i see value in being able to communicate but that's what texting is i don't see value in just feeling obligated to send random photos to random people or even not random people just for no purpose it seems like a waste of time a waste of attention uh second i think 
I believe, at least when I was last on Snapchat, there are like stories that are recommended for you through the algorithms. And I just, a lot of them are just very useless content that's just, it's not providing any value. So again, reiterating on the point that there is no value that you're gaining from this app. And three, it's such a time waster. Me personally, I tend to have a somewhat addictive personality when it comes to dopamine. Mm -hmm. Like I like, I like feeling happy. Now with Snap, I was always on it because I wanted to talk to people, see people, and I was very unproductive with my day and I wasted so much time. I always wonder if I had never had Snapchat, what are all the things that I would have been able to do? But that's enough about me. I want to hear. Well, actually, I'd, I'd like to follow up on that, not to put you on the spot, but what are kind of some of the benefits you've seen since, I mean, except for those two weeks of relapse, you've been off it for a long time. So if you could just kind of explain the benefits that you've seen being off of sure. Snap. Yeah, well, one my mind just feels peaceful peaceful when i had snapchat i always felt oh i wonder who snapped me mm -hmm. now i don't think about it also i've cut relationships with a lot of people just naturally through not speaking to them and that just shows you how many people are in your life that maybe don't need to be as close to you as they are that doesn't mean they're not good people it just means you really find out who truly is in your circle and who has your back yeah um and just the third would just be I'm doing more in my day. I have better structure, better routines in my day. So, yep. Well, um, I would say Snapchat probably is close to being my least favorite, but my least favorite is kind of a recent one that's picked up, and it's Be Real. Yeah. Um, never had it. Never. Never me neither. Either. But, and I'm not really gonna apply like a stoic lens to this. It's just stupid. Like, why do you feel the need to constantly document what you're doing? In the sense that you're sharing it with other people. Right. I like, get documenting your journey mm -hmm. to yourself, but I, yeah. Like, why does everybody need to know what you're doing, you know, at 324 on a Tuesday? Like, right. there's certain, and that's certainly the problem with social media and the digital age largely nowadays is that it's just kind of the um, disappearance of privacy. Yep. There um, you go. We don't get to kind of, now obviously you can make the choice whether or not to have be real, but if you have be real, you don't get the option to be private. And then, to me, it's just the disruption as well. Um, obviously, being a high school student, this may not be the experience for everybody, but literally, the B roll goes off and class is interrupted. For what? I can't tell you how many times I've been in class and someone shouts out, "It's time to be real." Exactly. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. Then you have to argue, how real are you being when you're like, "Oh, I have to be real," and then you like get four of your friends, and then you're like, like it's, all "It's all it's all posturing. Yeah. It's really all posturing." So it's fake. It's disruptive. And it really um, disrupts privacy in and the modern no age. And there's no value. No. I'm, I'm agreeing with you 100%. There's absolutely, I don't see any value in it. And I mean, thankfully, it's just like a one time. I, I mean, I don't really have the best knowledge, but from my understanding, it's just like a one time thing Once every day. Once per day. And I think it's like different times per right, day, yeah. I think. Yeah. So, I mean, you c certainly can spend time scrolling. And then there's also that aspect. Like, why do you care so much why everybody else is doing at 324 right. on a Tuesday? Like, to me, it's, it's irrelevant. Like, if, if I cared, like, I would be with you doing the same thing. Well, that's the thing, too, is also, like you said with privacy, not everybody needs to know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And people don't understand, like, the concept of that because they're in that social media cycle. Like, yeah. A, no one cares. Like, no one, yeah. not a lot of people care what you're doing every second of the day. And B, like, I don't think people realize, like, what they post stays there. And, like, there's some aspects of your life that you really shouldn't be sharing with other people. And yeah. that it would have a lot more value if you were doing by yourself like people try to go do hikes for the b-reel so that they can s right. show everybody that they're in nature how valuable is that Instead when you're worried about being be real in nature, yeah right when yeah. you're worried about an app versus you're in nature go enjoy the beauty of nature don't worry about a social media app so that's why it's my um most recent least favorite not because of the, like the time wasting aspect like right. you said of snapchat but just the silliness of it to me and the fact uh, that it, it disrupts true. normal routines of life and it disrupts privacy I agree. Um, but with social media, we actually, I want to say that it has been a very good gift to us in the sense that marketing th with marketing and through this podcast, we actually want to do a little shout out real quick uh, to all our international listeners. Yeah. We've reached listeners in Argentina, Belize, um, I, Mongolia, Mongolia, Thailand, Sweden, Spain, France. We've, yeah. um, it's been really cool for us to see that stoicism is kind of, an interest of people all around the globe. Yeah, and so we really growing. just want to shout out those people 
who are internationally and may not know us personally, which a lot of right. our audience does, and, and again, who are taking wanna, the time to listen. We also want to thank, again, the, the local people who you know who you are as well. We're thankful for all the listeners, our listeners, but especially internationally, we just find it very interesting. And it's also very compelling to keep producing because we're touching lives completely across the globe. And ultimately, that's our goal. And so we hope that you keep listening and you keep sharing with those international c- communities. We definitely want the Gen Z Stoic to go globally. We want to... Sure. Um, help as many lives as we can and so it's just really cool to see that our influence is already reaching those heights yeah ironically enough to talk about influence this episode look at that look at our own personal influence if that's not proof that you know just living your values and kind of teaching that honesty reaches people i I never would have thought that we would be doing this and especially this quick yeah that's great it's really great thank you guys well moving on we are going to touch on um what is respect and how do you gain respect? So I think we've kind of gone over our definition period of like respect. So now it's kind of the, the tip and the advice for how to um, gain portion. Respect. So how, how ultimately do you gain respect? Respect is kind of, um, it goes hand in hand with influence. It's that I've got your back, you've got my back kind right. of sentiment where people will do things for you that they won't do for others. There's trust. It's really, if you go back and listen to our friendship episode, it's a lot of the values that we talked about in there in terms of good friendships right. come with respect. <clears throat> so how do you gain it? My first tip would be speak only when you need to. Too often nowadays there are people who are loud and obnoxious and they carry a conversation just by simply being loud or talking more than the other person. Right. A lot of the tips we're going to have in this section are going to be how to stand out. And I think the value of silence and the value of being quiet is something that makes you stand out. You know, in high school, in college and in life, you make fun of the quiet kid, but ultimately you're talking about the quiet it's kid. It's definitely a stereotype. When you go home at the end of the day, do you remember what was said with like maybe your best friend who you talk to all the time and right. you can't who can't stop talking? Do you remember everything that said or do you remember that conversation you had with maybe the quiet kid or somebody who practices like stoic values in that silence right. and it was sure. just one meaningful conversation? You remember that a lot more. And so those people that you want to gain respect from are going to remember your conversation a lot more if you value silence and you speak only when you need to. This ensures that what you say has meaning. If you say everything that's on your mind, there's going to be a lot of stuff that doesn't really have meaning. You can practice stoic values, but not everything you say is going to have meaning. Not everything that we say has meaning. Well, and again, I'll be honest, like I definitely need to work on that. I've always been an extrovert with people and Maybe well, maybe sh- oversharing. I think not necessarily being an extrovert is bad, mm-hmm. but I'm definitely guilty of been oversharing. There's nothing wrong with being an extrovert. What we're saying is that like we're specifically talking about people like in authority, people who you want to respect you. Right. Um, extrovert versus introvert doesn't matter in that setting. It matters really about professionality. It matters about standing out right. and speaking only when you need to ensures that what you say has meaning. Seneca has a quote that says that what is required is not a lot of words, but effectual ones. Yeah. Words that have meaning, words that carry weight. It goes hand in hand with influence. It goes hand in hand in respect. I use kind of the idiom that the loud one may win the conversation, but the quiet one wins at life. Because when you're quiet, you're sitting back and tracking the conversation. Mm-hmm. You're observing the conversation. You're actively learning from the conversation. Right. You're taking what's being said into your mind, taking it as feedback, and then thinking about what you say and putting direct meaning into the words that you say. And so I think that's our first tip in terms of garnering respect. Right. And I'm going to build off you uh, with, with inputting meaning with what you say. And also, so like you said, it's not about how much you say. It's about what you say and the effectiveness of the words that you're choosing to use. In that, having confidence in every single sentence every single word that you say and being clear with what you want is probably the second tip that i would give to gain respect if you are you may have good advice but the delivery is so key if i were to give someone advice but i was timid body language Mm -hmm. posture i was you know acting small rather than being open confident and deliverance that's what's going to make somebody respect you and also see you as influential if you have the ability to uh to deliver information in a way that's going to touch people well, and speaking in a confident tone, it's psychology, right? If you seem confident and if you sound confident, people, A, are going to believe more in what you say, right? and B, are going to be confident around you. Confidence right. builds confidence, and so by being confident in what you say, you're building confidence in the people around you. Right. And people want to be confident. They don't want to be around someone who's timid because that makes them feel shy because mm-hmm. they don't know what you're thinking yep. or what you're saying. If you're confident in what you're saying, those people are going to feel confident and they're going to want to be around you. And so that's the second tip, is confidence, because right. it... Um, builds confidence in the people you're speaking to and makes you stand out again. Right. And so we talked about how people will believe you more with confidence, but also if you just speak honestly, they don't have to believe you because what you're saying is the truth. And so that's our third tip is just simply the importance of honesty. 
honesty is important. We talked about in friendships and relationships. Yep. And so obviously it's going to be a huge factor in terms of getting people to respect you. Oftentimes people of authority, the people in high places that we're talking about are surrounded by people who tell them what they want to hear. And so yeah. if it's somebody who has the values that you do and somebody that you think deserves your respect right. and want, you want them to respect you back, how do you stand out? You don't tell them what they want to hear. You tell them the honest truth. Yep. And that doesn't mean bash them. It means bash them when it's appropriate yep. and tell them they're doing good when they are doing good things. Right. And that makes them stand out. If you're in a crowd of people pleasers and you're talking to this one person, you're going to be the one person that stands out because you're the one who was honest with them. Right. Well, and, that, and we, we talked about that with our uh, in our friends episode as well. Like you build good friends by being very honest with each other, no matter what the situation is. Uh, and with respect you here is what we are going to talk about a lot is with when talking to others and treating others with respect all the others must be treated equal to you now mm -hmm. this can go both ways whether in society in social class i'll, I'll use that right. term if someone was socially ranked air uh, quote in below you you still have to treat them with respect as if they were up at the same level of authority as you now the same goes for someone in a position of higher authority. That doesn't mean you can't be, it doesn't mean you're not formal, but what it means is you don't talk to them like you feel weaker than them. You have mm -hmm. to stand up and act equal to them in the sense of, I know I'm confident in my ability to give you value and I'm also aware that you are in a high position of authority with great power, great influence, etc. It's admiration, not fear. We just talked about confidence. If you project fear of somebody, like they're gonna obviously sense that um, animals have a key sense of fear, and I think humans don't have as keen a sense, but you can, you can kind still of tell. Feel energy. You can tell, yeah. Right. And with that as well, you have to be clear and concise about your intentions and your purpose. So if I were a, a huge tip socially to gain respect is when you meet someone, it's very important first to put out your intentions with this person and whatever you're doing. Um, and also in your actions, that will show what your morals and your vision is. Now, Marcus Raelius has a quote that says, never esteem anything as of advantage to you that will make you break your word or lose your self-respect. So when you're being clear and concise about your intentions and your values start to show, if, when your morals are living with honesty, you're gonna, that's gonna show and project onto this person that you're an honest person. Now, you can't say something or do an action that's gonna go back and say that you're not a man of your word. Right. Everything, when you're delivering your intentions, must be delivered in the sense that you're honest, you're trustworthy, and you're reliable. Well, and we keep talking about how when you're seeking respect, it has to be with the right people. And the right people are going to have the same purpose, and they're going to have the same morals, right. they're going to have the same goals, not like word for word, but they're going to be going places. And so they're going to want to be surrounded by people who are doing the same thing. So by explicitly stating that at the beginning of your conversation, they're going to be like, hmm, like this person stands out, this person is somebody who I can grow with, somebody who is going to make something of themselves and somebody I want to be aligned with. Right. And so they're going to give you that respect because they realize that you have that potential. And so it's it's very important to stress that to those people. And and when you when you when you make these intentions clear, it's also important not to overshare, but just to the key the staple points of your intentions must be made clear rather than telling your whole life story and oversharing everything to this person because then that has a negative effect in the opposite. And so our last tip is about knowledge and vocabulary choice. Um, when talking to people in places of authority of those high places, those people who can give you the influence, give you the respect that gets you things, gets you opportunities, allows you to uh, further your mindset and your goals, knowledge is very key. You can't go into a conversation being uninformed and you can't sure. sound uninformed. Both knowledge and vocabulary choice are an underrated aspect of interaction. Those who sound professional just simply seem more professional. By using vocab properly, by using um, you know big words, right? you sound more intelligent and you sound more professional. Right. And the people in this environment that we're talking about are going to be those people in those professional fields that can help you out and um, get you close to your goals and give you kind of those um, little leg ups in the world that you certainly well, you know need. this you're a speech and debate guy you you personally better than me understand the importance of word choice and vocabulary and what in an argument you understand that it's very important to like all the things we've done to remain confident to have a strong word choice to be well informed clear and concise yeah uh, uh, seneca says if you can speak eloquently with ease use it to your advantage and for good causes and i think eloquent speaking is kind of regarded as something that just is like a gift. Right. 
but it's really not like we have so many resources nowadays to kind of improve your vocabulary and just do simple research like you talk about debate i'm not going to really speak on that because it's just simple debate it's not really like relationship building but i'm about to go to the capitol next week and i'm probably going to meet with congressmen and congresswomen of the state of colorado and i'm going to make sure that if I talk to them about a certain bill or something, I will have done my research and I'm going to sound professional. I'm not going to go in there with mm-hmm. slang. I'm not going to go in there with things like that. There's a time and a place for that. When you're with friends, there's a time sure. and a place for vocabulary. And what we're saying is when you're trying to build respect with people and you're trying to kind of get that base of the relationship, it is of utmost importance to get that professionalism in terms of the way you sound right. and how much you know about the topic you're speaking about. And so you obviously can't know everything. So when you are in a conversation with that person, and they talk about something that you don't know, it's okay to admit that you don't know things. It's it's much better to say, you know, That's part of oh, saying. I haven't I haven't heard about that before. Um, can you kind of give me the highlights of it or can you teach me about it rather than just sounding like you're, right. you think like trying to imitate that you know what's going on. Well, and that, that goes back to honesty, right? I mean, if it's better to be honest and vulnerable. And that's how you also gain respect is by being honest and you're like, oh, I don't know what this means, tell me more. And then you can become informed rather than lying to this person and then that breaks your bond and the respect that you have with that person. I also wanna say on this, since we're soon closing, that uh, Ren is the 4A? 3A. 3A. Is the 3A uh, speech and debate champion of Colorado. So and I extemporaneous just, speaking, yeah. I just wanted to highlight that. He did a fantastic job last weekend. Um, yeah. Or two weeks ago? It was last weekend. I think so. I don't really remember. Uh, Last week or two weeks ago, but um, just wanted to shout you out there on the podcast. Thank you. Yeah, it's certainly an accomplishment. Um, For me, it's something that's not really personal. I think what I'm more proud of is that our team got a ninth place, which is, I mean, out of, I think it's like 27 schools. Mm. Um, It isn't obviously the best you'd prefer to win, but we are a very small scale program, and so we're kind of just building up. Sure. But we got a plaque, and so it's very important in our first year as a program that we got to do that. Um, So kind of showcasing humility here. Um, Obviously, I'm grateful for the fact that I won. Um, I also want to shout out some of my competitors. I know one of them listens to the podcast now. Um, They were great. They were very kind, and they celebrated my win with me. And so I want to just thank my competitors. I obviously want to thank my coaches and then just shout out the program. I think that it was a great accomplishment both for me and the program. Um, But as we kind of wrap up our episode, um, we'll just kind of concise our tips. Sure. I think for respect and how you're gaining it, um, one is the value of silence, speaking only when you Mm -hmm. need to. Two is confidence in your words, always. Three is the importance of honesty, always being honest with the people you're talking to. Mm -hmm. And going hand in hand, that is treating others as your equal. Right. Um, And with um, influence, I would just say the main points that in in trying to gain influence for the right reasons, you have to... The first one is not mistaking influence for power and money, but rather as a good um, vessel to use your voice. Uh, Two would be gaining control over aspects of your life and getting more people to stand behind you. And uh, three would be the ability to make real change again by expressing your opinion. So if you have it for the right reasons, you will make a positive change and impact small scale to big scale community to the world. Uh, And last is just that don't strive for influence as something that's out of your control because external influence will come with it. So stay true to your values, stay true to your morals, speak your truth with good intentions. And then we'll close with what is the most important thing is that starting with self-respect and starting internally. Self-respect is not compromising your inner vision, listening to your inner voice, not compromising your goals, and not just simply following the herd because that's what they're doing, but it's because something you believe in. And when you start internally, the influence and respect will naturally come, especially with the help of our tips. Right. And I'd like to end with a quote that says that um, the accomplishments of man cannot start until he has cleared out his home. It means that when you do not have um, solid values and a solid base and you within your mind and your body are not pure with your intentions, pure with your values, your accomplishments mean little. Mm -hmm. And that's what we want to stress today is that start with the self-respect. For a lot of you, I think that you are already there. So it's now applying the tips and realizing what influences. It's not my power. It's the ability to change things. And so we'll close today. With our episode thank you for listening this has been the power of respect and how stoics become influential and we can't wait to see our fellow stoics become influential with us yep we will see you guys next time